You don't drive through McDonald's and pick up your salvation by the way, amen. You don't get the Holy Ghost by the way quickly. You get the things of God by getting hungry for God and by pressing into God, seeking God. And I'm, I'm, I'm on fire for the next generation to raise up this millennial generation that the world is studying and saying there's no hope for this generation. Oh, I want to tell you there's a lot of hope for this next generation. You will be the greatest generation this world has ever seen because God has singled you out and you better get ready for a mighty move of God is coming your way. The fire of God's going to get a hold of you and you will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout, yeah! Hi there, and thank you for watching this broadcast. CRC International is a church under the leadership of Pastor Aden, Pastor Nareta Bozo, with over 90 churches worldwide. May you be blessed by this message. And of course, our television audience, it is a great honor to bring the Word of God right to you, where you are, in your home, right here from the capital of South Africa, Pretoria, Tswane. We welcome you. Thank you for being with us today. Come on here from Pretoria, from Tswane. Let's give them a big, big, big warm welcome. We talk about the Holy Spirit, and today I want to focus on how the Holy Spirit leads us. Because really the key to success or to progress in life is to make the right decision at the right time. It's really to know what to do, when to do it. Amen. The Bible says time and chance happens to all of us. It's when to get the girl's phone number. If you're not married, it's when to take her on a date. It's when to apply for the job. It's when to witness to your friend. It's when to launch out into the deep, when to let down the net. It's to know what to do and when to do. Well, we spoke about this last week that God does not want us as his children to live the guessing game. He wants us to live knowing what the future holds. We can know tomorrow. You don't have to go to the witch doctor. You don't have to try and call up an ancestral spirit because you cannot. No spirit that died can ever come back. That's a demonic spirit and you better accept that. You cannot uh, mix ancestral worship with following Jesus Christ. Can I have a big amen here today? Okay. So the dead cannot return. You cannot talk to your old grandmother. You, 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 uh, that's all familiar spirits. We want to uh, 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 do things God's way. We want to understand that um, everything out there in the world is but a fake imitation of what God gave us. We have the original. So we should live with the unfair advantage. And remember that deception does not run opposite to truth. It runs parallel to truth. So the Bible says even the very elect can be deceived. As Satan transforms himself as an angel of light, you hear a voice and you think it's the voice of the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to show you how to make God-guided decisions. And next week we're going to talk about how to take God-guided steps by faith. Because we have to make the right decision and then we have to do the right thing. So John chapter 14, the Bible says, verse 12, the Bible says, Most assuredly, Jesus speaking, read in my Bible, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Now, can I have one of my twins here again? Let's just catch up quickly, okay? Give a big cheer. Uh, this is Jesus, amen, okay? But this is Jesus talking to the disciples, and he says... So this is Jesus when the disciples says, I will be with you. You're going to do greater works than I did. I mean, Jesus didn't struggle throughout life. All he did was raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. All Jesus did was uh, when people didn't know where the tax money was, he said, go, 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 catch a fish, man. Go do a business deal. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't sweat. I have the answer. I'm going to get you out of the ditch. I'll get you back to the mountaintop. I'll walk you through the valley. I'll walk you through the desert. I will sustain you. That is Jesus with the disciples. And then Jesus makes this statement. He says, you will work the works that I worked and greater works than these. Now he's going to tell us how we're going to work those greater works. He says, I'm going to pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. We saw the word helper is the Greek word parakletos, which means helper, strengthener, standby, advocate, teacher, one who aids you, one who assists you in everything that you do. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not Casper the ghost, because when you speak about the Holy Spirit, 
strong men want to run away because they think the Holy Spirit is not a manifestation. No, or is a manifestation. The Holy Spirit is not a goosebump, the Holy, although it can give you a goosebump. The Holy Spirit is not a manifestation. The Holy Spirit is equal to God. The Holy Spirit was there in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. The Holy Spirit represents Jesus on planet earth today. Jesus physically right now is seated at the right hand of God the Father, where he lives to make intercession for you and me. That Jesus who walked with the disciples said, I'm going to send another helper, helper, somebody to help you, to assist you, to aid you in life, in ministry, somebody who will guide you into all truth. Then in John chapter 16, verse 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage. It's expedient for you. It is better for you that I go away, because if I do not go, the help of the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Please, Holy Jesus, by Never leave me nor forsake me, but he left. Amen. Say, ah. Oh. Well, that's how the disciples felt. 500 heard him say, uh, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm sending another helper. And before they change the world, he says, wait in Jerusalem for the promise. Wait for the promise. I mean, we spoke about this. The early Testament church, before they did anything, after people got saved, they introduced people to the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus, will you please come back? Will you please go stand there? And you're in heaven, climb on the platform over there. And um, you're sending the Holy Spirit. Here comes the Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost. Ooh. They were all together with one accord in one place. And suddenly there was this. There was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. You know, you talk about God not being dramatic. God's very dramatic. Old Testament, he talks on the mountain shake. People are so afraid they run for 16 miles. The Bible says they stood afar off. That afar off literally means 16 miles. People come to our church and they say, it's a little bit loud in this place. Well, if you were there when God spoke, the whole earth shook. The heavens shake. I mean, the earth is God's footstool. If God taps his foot on the beat, the whole earth begins to shake. Amen. So on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost didn't come apologetically. He made a statement. He made an announcement the same way there was an announcement when Jesus Christ came. The angels, glory to God in the highest, goodwill to all mankind. There's something dramatic again. Angels appear to the shepherds at the birth of Jesus. The announcement is made. Herod knows. The whole world knows. knows the stars align. The Savior is born. What do you think is going to happen when the Holy Spirit comes? Not something that is non-dramatic. On the day of Pentecost, the announcement happens. They were all together in one place with one accord. And suddenly there is a sound from heaven as of a mushing, mushing, rushing mighty wing. And there appeared cloven tongues of fire and one sat on each of them. So God came very dramatically. The Holy Spirit came to this earth in the place of Jesus Christ. As Jesus walked with the disciples 24-7, now Jesus said, it is better for you that I go, because if I don't go, the Holy Ghost will not come. So he has sent the Holy Spirit to be with me. Wherever I go, there's the Holy Spirit. The helper is there. The aid is there. The comforter is there. The counselor is there. The strengthener is there. The standby is there. The one that is as real as Jesus is now on the earth, but you cannot see him. You have to discern him and you have to perceive him. He's invisible, but he's there. And when he moves, you know it. Like when the wind moves, you can't see the wind, but you see the result of the wind. But people fear. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, people have this warped idea of the Holy Spirit. Well, let's have a Pentecost week, and all we do is focus on manifestation. He never said, I'm sending a manifestation. He said, I'm sending a person. And we all know when a person is in the place, you know he's there. I mean, I was a single till I was 23. Then I got married and there was a person in my bed. And after the person left my bed um, to go make food, because I taught my wife right. Okay. I could still smell her. When I come into the house and she's been in a room, even if I can't see her, I can smell she's been there by her Chanel. <laughs> can smell the presence of God. I mean, the religion have taught us to, to not use our senses, have taught us to be desensitized when it comes to the things of God, have taught us that God is not real. So when people walk in a building like this and people are excited about a living God, they think, near young, near, near young. 
Yeah, but when Tiger Woods heals a, oh, it's a golf ball, everybody stands. Ooh, ooh. The same person that's dead in church on a Sunday can shout his head off for somebody that won 79 major tw- or major, uh, tournaments on the PGA. Oh, Tiger. Oh, Tiger. Oh, Tiger. Oh, Tiger. Oh, Tiger. And we get the pom-pom girls and everything. But we come to church and we can't worship God. We come to church and we can't look for the presence of God. David, who was a mighty warrior, David, who was a mighty man of God, he said, I come to church to look for you, God. Not for the preacher. I come to look for you, God. I look for you in the sanctuary. I worship you, God, because I look for you, because you are real. I sense your presence. I hear you. I smell you. I'm comfortable in your presence, oh God, because this is who Jesus said. We have to discern says, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. I don't need Linda Goodman's book. I don't need the horoscope. I don't need the stars. I don't need a witch doctor. I have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So you better take that rope off. You better take that money out of your shoe. You better go dig up that bottle that you put in the front of your house thinking that God's going to bless you. You better break with the works of darkness. You better trust God. You better trust God with your future. Amen. No longer dabble in uncertain places, but get closer to God in the name of Jesus. And watch what God is going to do in your life. In a moment, God will do what this world and the devil cannot do in a lifetime in Jesus' name. He will glorify me. So if we're going to work the greater works of God, we better get to know how the Holy Spirit talks to us. How does He talk? How does He lead us? He's not some mystical force out there. I told rugby players, uh, some of the Springboks in the Bible study this week, I said, don't say the man upstairs, please. Can we have a little bit of respect for God? Don't the man upstairs. Don't the big guy upstairs. That big guy, listen, one day when you stand before him, your knees are going to knock. Your knees are going to knock at a million, billion miles an hour. Don't get so familiar with God that you forget who this God is, who this Jesus is, who died on the cross for you 2,000 years ago. You better recognize that God is God. He's Elohim. He's the most high God. He's the high and lofted one. And he loves you. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. You respect Him, you revere Him, you love Him, you admire Him, you praise Him, you draw closer to this amazing God and you will see what God will do in your life. He will do incredible things in your life, but you have to recognize who He is. That He sent His Son. And then His Son sent the the Holy Spirit. Come please, come back here. One just alike. I love it. Two identical twins. The Holy Spirit's not inferior to Jesus. People say, oh, I was just one of the disciples of Jesus, but you are. You're in this dispensation. The Bible says that the prophets of old desire to live in. He sent the Holy Ghost, but we live like this with the Holy Ghost. We ignore Him. We turn our back on Him. We live as if not, He's not there. We run everywhere but run to Him. We talk to everyone but Him. We've never learned to develop a relationship with Him. We try cry to God for help, and God said, I've already sent the helper. We ask God for wisdom. God says, I've given you the source of wisdom. We ask God to, to show us. God says, I've given you the vision already through the person of the Holy Ghost. You want to know what I have in mind for you? You better get to know the Holy Ghost. You better cultivate a relationship with the Holy Ghost the same way the disciples had to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give them both a big God bless you and a big clap. Thank you again for helping me today. So God wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, the Bible says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. How many of you know that you know that you know that you know that if you die today, you would go to heaven? Not you wish, you know. You know. Lift your hands, say amen. How many of you believe that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life? I can stand you and I'm saying there is no, but you, how do you know? Have you seen the Lamb's book of life? Oh, pastor, I had a vision, you know, I went to heaven. No, 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 no. Don't get flaky. You have a witness. You know. I mean, there was a time I wasn't born again. I didn't know. I I went to church and I felt guilty. Because every human being will have to battle guilt until you Meet the one who takes guilt away when he removes sin in your life. So I was always guilty. I came to church feeling guilty. Because I never had a revelation of God's love. I wasn't born again. When I received Jesus Christ, the guilt left and the witness came. The guilt said, you're not good enough. 
The guilt said God doesn't love you. The guilt said God's got a big black book and he's recording all your wrongs. Then the witness came that said forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed my sin from me. I'm washed in the blood. I'm born again. I'm heaven bound. I'm a child of God. Come on, somebody that's born again. That can rejoice that your name's in it. Just give the Lord a praise, please. So God does not want his children to play the guessing game. He doesn't want you to live by chance. He doesn't want you to live by trial and error. Remember, a good idea is not always a God idea. And not every voice you hear is God's voice. So how do we discern this detailed plan that God has for our lives? Surely God doesn't want me to live with, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be. Now I do it right and tomorrow I do it wrong. We're not alive by accident. We've been predestined by God for great things, each one of us. Whether you're black, white, Asian, colored, it doesn't matter. You're a child of God. You're not an orphan. You're not a grandchild. God has a personal, destiny, detailed plan for your life. Male, female, educated, uneducated, literate, illiterate. God wants to guide you into His paths that He predestined for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to be your personal helper to do five things quickly. Number one, to guide you into all truth. Psalm 32, verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. The word teach in the Hebrew means to instruct, to direct the flow of something. So God says, I will teach you. I will direct the flow of your life. So God wants to guide you. Number two, the Holy Spirit came to be your teacher, to teach you all things, how to be a good wife, how to be a good husband. Not how just to be a witness, but how to live this life successfully for the glory of God. How to be a man of integrity, how to care for the orphans, how to be the good Samaritan or the good South African, how to be successful in business, how to be a doctor. Blessed by God, amen, when you operate, when a patient sits in front of you, you just suddenly know, although all the symptoms are like this, you know in your spirit something, but, but, but this, is, this is what's wrong, yeah. That's the Holy Ghost, it's supernatural. It's not just for Sunday or revival week. It's for every day of your life. 1 John chapter 2 verse 20, the Bible says you have an unction, you have an anointing from the Holy Ghost or the Holy One, and you know all things. Number three, the Holy Spirit has been sent by Jesus to show us things to come that's why i told you come to church with sunglasses anybody with sunglasses here today amen because the future is bright doesn't matter what the economist says i don't read the newspaper because the newspaper is yesterday's news i read the bible because the bible talks about tomorrow amen i have a future and i have a hope hallelujah even when adversity comes, I look through the storm. When I face giants, I look to the greatness of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, hears the deep things of God. So we may not know the future, but God knows the future. Look at the person next to you and look them in the eye today and say, God has a great future for you. Number four, he, he's yet to bring things to your remembrance. Of course, we can let things slip so easily. We stand in church, we say, Ah, God, I will go where you want me to go. I will do what you want me to do, blah, 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 blah. And then you worship God, says, but remember, love your wife, give to the poor, be that home cell leader, open your house for me, be generous, be a businessman of purpose. Not just when you stood and you had a, a, a spiritual high and in that moment you said, I'll do anything for you, God. The Holy Spirit says, I heard that. Now let's walk this path together. Make a difference in your world. Number five, he came to glorify Jesus. Everything we say and do should be for the glory of God. How we carry ourselves, how we park our cars, how we miss the parking attendance when we leave church. Amen. Not we lift our hands on Sunday when we come to church, worship God, and when we leave, the hands do other signs, okay? 
Great coffee shop. We're doing the mezzanine floor. A beautiful lounge where you can go chill and relax. We're going to give you an extra service so you don't get too agitated on a Sunday, 8 o'clock in the morning, so you can keep on pursuing God. But I've learned if you make things too easy for people, they don't appreciate sacrificing for God. It cost Jesus everything to die for us. And I think a little bit of sacrifice for God is a good thing. Amen. It's not a fast food restaurant. You don't drive through McDonald's and pick up your salvation by the way. Amen. You don't get the Holy Ghost by the way quickly. You get the things of God by getting hungry for God and by pressing into God, seeking God. And I'm, I'm, I'm on fire for the next generation to raise up this millennial generation that the world is studying and saying there's no hope for this generation. Oh, I want to tell you there's a lot of hope for this next generation. You will be the greatest generation this world has ever seen because God has singled you out and you better get ready for a mighty move of God is coming your way. The fire of God's going to get a hold of you and you will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout, yeah! But every decision I made, I had three sure witnesses. Because I've seen too many people that hear a voice, they think God spoke to them, they walk into my office, they say, Pastor, God spoke to me, what do you think? I say, well, amen, go for it. Because you just told me God spoke to you, and God outranks me. So when you tell me God spoke to you, I can say nothing. But when you say, Pastor, I think, I, I feel like I'm considering, what do you think? Total different story. But when you pull the God card, God outranks all of us. Amen. So we, 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 want to know God, we want to know how God talks to us. Because having been a pastor for 32 years, I've seen many people on fire that are now in a ditch somewhere. I've seen many people that thought God led them and they are now a skeleton. I've seen many people quit their jobs and go to the mission field and I knew it wasn't God. And I warned them and they said, but God told me. And today they finished. Not even serving God. Many husbands and wives that stood before the altar until death do us part and then the person gets a word when they pray shandai hundai tie my bow tie oh pastor you know we're going through a bad time but the lord spoke to me that uh, he's going to give me an end time wife now if you've gone through a divorce it's 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 sad it's tragic you cannot change that but if you're thinking about divorce please don't amen i mean divorce is not the unpardonable sin and there's enough pain. I'm not here to judge or condemn anybody that's gone through divorce. But I want to tell you, let's not spiritualize our battles. Let's not spiritualize our decisions. Let's not spiritualize uh, things that should not be spiritualized. Amen. Sometimes we make bad decisions. Then God will help us get out of those bad decisions. But I'm saying we need to get to the place of prevention rather than cure. Because God said, I will show you things to come. Before your child rebels, God wants to show you the sign. Spend more time with your boy. Love your boy. Put your arms around him. Because something else is busy stealing your boy's heart. Don't be a dad who doesn't get it. Be a dad who walks with God so that you can discern the work of the enemy in your family. Come on, say amen. Not, I don't know what happened here. We have the unfair advantage when we walk with the Holy Ghost. So God talks to us in many ways. Number one, visions. Which is an exception. Any human being will maybe get one or two visions in his life. And it's always a purpose but relating to God's kingdom. Number two, dreams. I've never had a dream. So thank God I'm not an old man yet. Hallelujah. Audible voice. It's an exception. Naval Hill, I heard God audibly talk to me. Run for me or I'll find another. Come before the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is authoritative. We'll talk about the witness in a moment, but when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he doesn't mince his word also. When God spoke to me to come to Pretoria and I delegated that, I sat in the front row, Pastor Casey Treat was speaking and the Holy Spirit said to me, I've told you. Now that's how God deals with me. He, do, he doesn't talk to me via Cape Town. If he needs my attention, he says, hey! No, like we, we, we make Jesus, we we're like this little charismatic, and that's why I want people to go nowhere because they have no respect, they don't understand the foundation of this relationship, how holy, how sacred, how real it is because they don't have the revelation. And I'm going to do a series after the holiday on eternity. 
so we can understand eternity while we live in this world. Because people live as if they're going to live forever. They don't understand the reality of eternity. That our prayers affect eternity. Our lifestyle affects eternity. Our witness affects eternity. Our giving affects eternity. We will stand before God one day. And I hope every one of us hears, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. If this powerful message has touched your life and you'd like to give your life to Jesus, pray the following prayer with Pastor Art. Jesus, I give my life to you. I open my heart and I invite you to take your rightful place, Jesus Christ. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with all my heart you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Thank you for forgiveness of all my sin. Thank you for your grace. That breaks the power of sin. I can never be the same again. I'm born again. I'm saved. I am your child now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Art, for that encouraging message. We hope and believe that you've been blessed truly by this message. If you'd love to hear more about CRC, please visit our website. That's all we have for you for today. I'm Sidi Gude, and God bless.